Hey guys, it's Gregor, aka The Ubermensch, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the most likely candidates for the line of German battleships that is soon coming to World of Warships. It'll provide you with a general historical overview of these ships and how I imagine they would function in game. Background footage consists of games in an eclectic mix of ships, some of which are not battleships, but sorry, not sorry. Playing battleships at low tiers by myself is about as enjoyable as sticking needles in my face. Let's get into it then. First, a primer. Most of the ships you could fit into this line were built as close-up brawlers, fitted for the close-range knife fighting of the Northern Atlantic as opposed to the long-range plunge firing of the Pacific. A few stereotypes developed with some exceptions, of course, but the characteristics to keep in mind would be large amounts of hull armor, turtle backs, which were armored plates fitted through the interior of the ship that hung vital components like a turtle shell, and fast reload speeds for their main guns at the cost of gun caliber. Basically very tough close-range brawlers that would be difficult to get citadel penetrations on. Again, it's worth mentioning that these are only general characteristics, and some of the ships I'm thinking of are exceptions to such characteristics in certain instances, but it can determine whether or not you're gonna start progressing down the line, and I think it's worth mentioning. Now, battleship design over the course of the 20th century varied wildly, regardless of the nations they were made in, and understandably, the characteristics of these ships will vary wildly from ship to ship. For the purposes of this video, I've drafted a hypothetical battleship line based off of the ships that I could find from basic research. It's not entirely fleshed out, but that's primarily because I tried to find ships that I think would be most likely to show up in it from pre-dreadnoughts to post-dreadnoughts to World War II era ships. That's enough rambling though, let's get into it. First, pre-dreadnought ships in this game are an interesting topic to tackle. If we look at the battleship line from Japan and America we have now, we find that their first dreadnoughts are featured at tier 3 to start their respective battleship lines. Additionally, we have the tier 2 Japanese Mikasa pre-dreadnought, so I find it logical that any pre-dreadnought battleships from henceforth would be placed before Tier 3. A fitting Tier 2 ship to add, if we ever did such a thing, in my opinion, would be that of the Deutschland-class battleships commissioned in 1906, but specifically the SMS Schleswig-Holstein, one of five of these vessels built. I'd think of adding this vessel specifically because of the significant role that it played in both the First and Second World Wars. It fired the first shots of the latter at Poland. I think it deserves some recognition in that sense. It was also the fastest, and most heavily armored, of the other ships in her class. In-game, I'd put this ship at Tier 2, understandably. Compared to the only other battleship at that tier, the Mikasa, she'd have slightly better armor overall, smaller caliber guns with better range and better shell velocity, two dual-barreled turrets mounted with 11-inch guns, a potent set of anti-aircraft guns, and speed inching just over her Japanese counterpart at about 19 knots. Which is still pretty slow, but it is a battleship after all. At the very least, Schleswig-Holstein serves as an interesting piece of history that I wouldn't be surprised at seeing represented in-game. Let's get to Tier 3 though, where the real meat and potatoes start, of which I can say with a great deal of certainty will feature the Nassau-class Dreadnoughts, which I'd represent in-game with the SMS Nassau one of four ships commissioned in 1909. The Nassau had a great deal of hull armor with a turtle back. Gun configuration is similar to the Japanese Kawachi in that it has four wing turrets, two of which being on either side of the ship, and single turrets mounted front and back, all dual-barreled 11-inchers. These guns would function off a of DPM rather than DPS. Her secondary batteries aren't too bad either, with 12 150 mils and 16 88 mils. Anti-aircraft capabilities are a bit lacking, but who really cares when we're looking at Tier 3 overall? The Nassau also reached a top speed of about 20 knots. It seems like a very reasonable candidate to start the German battleship line with. I doubt that we won't see it in that position because, frankly, I can't really think of any other ships to fill that role that this ship would fill. Early mid-tier is a bit more tricky to decide because Germany made a lot of dreadnoughts, aside from the Nassau, that all served in the First World War. The Helgoland class commissioned in 1911, the Kaiser class commissioned in 1912, the Koenig in 1914, and the Bayern in 1915. If you were to ask me what ship would show up in the line, at mid-early tier, I think the most likely one to show would be the Kaiser. Now for the Kaiser, which I'd represent with the SMS Kaiser itself. 
10 12-inch guns arranged in a very strange manner. Five turrets dual-barreled. Two of them are placed in the front, with one of them favoring the starboard side, and three placed and aimed towards the back, with one of them favoring the port side. I don't know what the rationale for this would be, perhaps one of you can tell me in the comments. Regardless, it would seem that this ship would favor its port side if it wanted to maximize its firepower for an 8-gun broadside. I imagine the Kaiser would be a DPM-oriented ship rather than a DPS-oriented ship, though. Her armor belt would be significantly thicker than her like-tiered counterparts with a turtle back. Deck armor not so much, but this ship would be a brawler like many other German dreadnoughts. Anti-aircraft armament a bit lacking, but I can't think of anything with a lot of anti-air power at Tier 4 to begin with. She'd also be about as fast as the Wyoming in a straight line, at around 20 knots. Kaiser skippers would probably be wise to avoid long-range plunging firefights as much as possible, making usage of its very thick armor belt to get in close and duke it out with their fast-firing guns. Another ship that I wouldn't be surprised to see in-game, maybe at Tier 5 or Tier 6, would be the Bayern-class Super Dreadnoughts. Its contemporaries in history being the New York and Fuso battleships, so I'm betting Tier 5 is the most likely choice of the two. The two Bayern class ships made were the last battleships to be completed by the Kaiserliche Marine of the First World War. The Bayern was fitted with some pretty high caliber weaponry for its time. Four dual-barreled 15-inch turrets, two in the front and two in the back. High caliber, but not quite as many guns as the New York. Still, they'd fire faster because Germany. The Baron would also be mounted with a very, very thick armor belt and a turtle back, but once again her weakness is deck armor, comparable speeds to other like-tiered battleships. Again, like other German dreadnoughts, this ship would be best when up close and personal. It may be slow, but if it closes in, then there's gonna be hell to pay. At later tiers, though, we have the matter of warships built for the Kriegsmarine in World War II, and the most popular of these vessels, aside from the Bismarck class, would definitely be the Scharnhorst. The Scharnhorst battleships are interesting because while armored like battleships, they were armed like cruisers with nine 11-inch guns mounted in tri-barreled turrets, two in the front, one in the back. It was also mounted with six torpedo tubes. Though the main gun layout was actually supposed to be temporary, she was supposed to be mounted with six 15-inch guns later, but this conversion never took place. Make no mistake, the Scharnhorst in the previous configuration was never meant to take on other battleships. It was built as a fast-moving brawler, with a top speed of around 31 knots. I don't know if Wargaming would give the player the option of running this ship with either the 11-inch guns or the 15-inch guns, though I imagine playstyle would change drastically based off of this. With the 11-inch guns, I'm sure that a good Scharnhorst captain would make sure to seek out enemy cruisers and destroyers, pummeling them into submission at close range. If it had the double 15-inch guns, then perhaps that would be enough to fight the battleships, but I'm sure the DPM advantage would be lost. All in all, I'm pretty certain that the Scharnhorst will more than likely appear in its base configuration in World of Warships, and will be one of the main reasons people go down the German battleship line. It makes sense to put it at Tier 7, considering that the Bismarck is definitely going to be placed at Tier 8, and I can't see this ship functioning at Tier 6 without being unbalanced. It seems like a younger brother of the Bismarck in a lot of ways, though. You all know about the Bismarck, she was one of the most terrifying war machines ever conceived by man, and it took a great deal of effort by the Brits to take her down. Top speed of around 30 knots, 8 15-inch guns and dual-barreled turrets front and back, and a very, very thick armor belt. Basically the most German of German battleships that you could probably find. Unlike the Tirpitz, however, the Bismarck was never fitted with torpedo tubes. Is there a balance discrepancy here, then, in that the Tirpitz is a premium? Uh... Let's not talk about that. Okay? Let, let's not. As for very, very late tiers, the planned H-Class paper ships make the most sense. H-39 would probably be at tier 9, and H-41 would probably be at tier 10. Like her predecessors, the engineers who drafted the plans for these ships pictured them fighting up close. If anything, these ships would have been absurdly huge, the H-39 displaced about 56,000 tons, but the latest made draft of these ships, the H-44, was supposed to displace about 131,000. It was also equipped with 20-inch guns. How they would have made this thing clock in at 30 knots? I have no idea. The H-44 was so out there that I think that the H-39 and H-41 would serve as Germany's late-tier battleships just fine. And that is a general idea of how we could see German battleships in World of Warships.
basically a line of close-range brawlers, oversized cruisers in some aspects. While not exactly what many may think of when they say the word battleship, many of these warships prove their own in the conflicts they served in and should serve as interesting ships to play in-game. Got any more ideas? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more content like this and give it a thumbs up. It really does go a long way. I also did a video very similar to this one on British warships and a review of the Tirpitz in-game. So definitely check those out if you like this one. As always, thanks for watching.